Hello again. Uh, we're going to quickly add on to our discussion that I previously recorded. And we're going to talk a little bit more about genre in horror and also about the things I want you to start thinking about and paying attention to in this class. And then uh, we'll sort of segue into some of the readings. So hold on a second while I try to share the presentation. Okay, so again, what is horror? And sort of to build on some of the things I talked about last time, I want you to start thinking about genre. So horror as a genre, right, has it, it's consistent uh, themes. It's about fear, uh, frustration, anxiety. Uh, it's all about, you know, scaring you. And so if, if you take horror as a genre, there are a lot of different types of films that can be classified as horror. So let's think about breaking them down. And so I have a few classifications to get you started. These are not nice and always nice and neat because sometimes you can have a film that's in one classification, but it could also maybe be in another. And are these classifications hard set? These are things I want you to think about. Or are they sort of fluid? And um, later on, we'll start thinking about the representation of women in horror films and gender and sexuality. And then how do those ideas fit into these classifications? And I'll, I'll hint a little bit about that as we go along, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so types of horror, right? So we'll start with the ghost horror, haunted house. Um, there are a lot of different films that fit into this category. So basically any film that has a ghost, uh, you know, for example, we'll be watching A Woman in Black from 2012, uh, directed by James Watkins and starring Harry Potter. Uh, actually, no, starring Daniel Radcliffe, right? And so, Again, sort of Woman in Black plays on the idea of the haunted house, but also the ghosts, sort of how do they come together. Um, another example, of course, is Poltergeist from 1982, directed by Toby Hooper, written by Steven Spielberg. Um, and so again, these sort of films that play, and there's a whole slew of, you know, Haunting on Hill House, you know, it, they go on. So the idea is that the house becomes this evil presence or the ghost within the house, the ghosts within the house uh, become the evil presence and, and they, they haunt and have to be either placated potentially or not, uh, or do they win in the end? And with the introduction of the sequel, of course, often they're placated perhaps temporarily but not completely dispelled, right? And so that leaves you open for a nice, lovely sequel. Uh, films that are, and I mentioned The Golem last week, sorry, last week, the other day. Uh, so Golems, Mummies, Reanimated Stalkers, and The Golem, this category fits both Frankenstein, um, but also Golem films. And so one of the, the first Golem film actually is from 1915. It's uh, this one right here. Da, 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 the Golem, and it's uh, written and directed by Paul Wegener and Henrik Galeen, and Paul Wegener actually acts as the Golem, so he's, he's both writing and directing it and starring in it. Um, of course, you have Frankenstein, sort of the constructed monster, and then, of course, Bride of Frankenstein, which we'll be watching in this class, um, and sort of the idea of what does it take to build a man and what happens when that that man exists? Does he have a soul? Is he good? Is he bad? Um, and what's his relationship to his maker, right? And then, of course, you have the mummy, the idea of the person who is dead and then comes back to life, all wrapped in, you know, it comes out of Egyptian tradition, and there are whole, slew, whole slews of mummy films. Um, this one is a more recent film from 2017, directed by Alex Kurtzman, um, starring Tom Cruise and Sophia Butella. Butella. And I picked this one uh, because this is one of the few mummy films where the mummy is actually a woman, right? So uh, uh, Sophia Butella plays Am 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 Yeah, I'm gonna totally mess that up. Amanet. Um, so the and so she comes back and deals with her past and the future, et cetera. 
Okay, and you have vampires and werewolves, and sometimes you have films that bring them together, right? So um, the the upper example up here is actually a film called The Werewolf versus the Vampire from 1971. It's a Spanish film directed by Leon Klamowski. And down here you have a British film called Ginger Snaps, which is about uh, one, uh, two sisters, one of whom is bitten by a werewolf, and mayhem ensues, right? So the idea that, um, you know, this has its roots in sort of the supernatural, but also it has a connection to to man and the infection, right? That that either the bite of the werewolf, the bite of the vampire, and then how that transforms the human body and psyche. Uh, demonic possession, and of course, one of the quintessential demonic possession films is The Exorcist by William Friedkin from 1973. Um, and this is the movie that terrified generations. Black Magic, Witches and Warlocks. And um, so, as, so as examples, so, and these are sort of, again, supernatural connected to magic and the problems that magic brings to the rational world. Um, so uh, here you have um, Mario Batava's 1960 Black Sunday, starring the inimitable Barbara Steele, who's sort of the queen of uh, British horror. Um, and then down here you have Warlock, which spawned a whole series of Warlocks, starring Julian Sands and Richard E. Grant, and that one's directed by um, Steve Miner. It's from 1986, and uh, you'll see Julian Sands in another sort of bizarre horror film, <laughs> questionably horror, called Boxing Helena. Um, we'll talk more about that late in the semester. Um, you have the mythological monster, and this, these are not all going to be old films. So uh, more, most recently, you have The Quiet Place, sort of these monsters that invade the world and take over. Um, and the monster is, you know, there's another category we'll talk about in a second, the rampant animal. And so is, is the monster an animal? Is it separate? And so um, sometimes these monsters are from outer space. Sometimes they're already living here on our planet. Um, so for, for, as examples, of course, you have The Quiet Place, uh, directed by John Krasinski, uh, who also starring in him, and Emily Blunt from 2018, and then the classic Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, sorry, directed by Jack Arnold from 1956. Uh, Maniacs and Sociopaths. And again, these categories are really sort of flu fluid and loose. Um, but just as some examples, uh, you have Fatal Attraction um, from 1987 by Adrian Lynn, starring Glenn Close and Michael Douglas. And then, of course, Psycho with Alfred Hitchcock, um, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, starring um, Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee in 1960. We won't talk about the remake. Okay. Um, rampant animals and other echo monsters. And again, sort of you could look at the alien, the this sort of foreign outside uh, entity as both a monster, but also um, as an animal, the, the connections between all of those. So as examples, we have Jaws from 1975 by Steven Spielberg, starring uh, Roy Schneider and Richard Dreyfuss. And Jaws is one of those films that was sort of like a little sleeper film and then changed the way people looked at the ocean for summers afterwards. Um, and then of course, Alien by 19, in 1979 by Ridley Scott, starring Sigourney Weaver. Psychological horror, right? And so these are horror films that play with, uh, that mess with your head. Um, some of them rather easily, some of them quite surprisingly. And so as an example, we have up here, Good Night Mommy, um, which is a film by from 2014 by directors Veronica Veronica Franz and Severin Fiala. It's an Austrian film, and then of course we have the Bada Book uh, from 2014 by um, Jennifer Kent, and that's an Australian film. And so again, the psychological horror film sort of plays with the psychology of the characters, but it's also encouraging you to connect to your own psychology and your expectations, both of the horror genre, but also of what's happening in the story.
um, small town horror films, right? So this is a whole genre in and of itself. And one of the scariest films I remember seeing growing up was The Village of the Damned um, from 1960 by Wolf Rilla. Techno horror, right? So what kinds of horror do we have from the technology that surrounds us? And the Japanese are really good with both techno horror and the ghost film. Um, and so, so one of the classic uh, pieces of techno horror, of course, is um, Hideo Nakata's Ringu from 1988. And perhaps you could consider its sequel up to you. So telekinesis and hypnosis as sort of sources of horror. Um, you can't really talk about this category without talking about Carrie, both the original uh, Brian De Palma film uh, starring Stissy Spacek in 1976, and then also Kimberly Pierce's uh, 2013 remake starring Julianne Moore and uh, Chloe uh, Grace Moritz, um, which whatever your thoughts are. I, personally, I think it's a really, it's a pretty decent remake. It changes some of the way in which you think about the characters in some really interesting ways, and we'll talk about that more later in the end of the semester. Um, another category is Splatterpunk, uh, Houses of a Thousand Corpses from 2003 by Rob Zombie is an example. And the thing with Splatterpunk is it's more about the blood and guts than about the story per se. So it's about that sort of shock value, the, the kind you watch through your fingers. Um, and then one last uh, comic is the comic horror, right? The comedy horror genre. And sort of the ones that sort of make you both laugh, that play with your knowledge of the horror genre, but also scare you when you're not expecting it, right? So um, one of my favorites is the 2004 Shaun of the Dead up here um, by Simon Pegg. And then of course you get the the Scary Movie from 2000 by Keenan Ivory Wayans. And Scary Movie, of course, spawned a whole series of scary movies. And it really sort of set the tone for what a, a comedy horror film will be, right? About its self-referentiality, making fun of the horror genre and all of the things you've come to expect and fear. Okay. So with that, we'll stop sharing for a bit and switch back here. So I just want to talk to you and get you thinking about, um, about the horror film, right? So the horror film is about what you see and what you don't see, right? So oftentimes you are, um, you're frightened because you see something happening, right? Um, and sometimes like the woman in black, one of the, one of the ways that I think it works really well is because you're terrified of what you don't see or what you see out of the corner of your eyes. You barely see it. So one of the aspects of horror, this, the idea of looking is especially important. Um, both the looking of the audience member on the horror that's happening, the look of the, of the victim as the killer you know, slabs her, stabs her in the in the closet. The look of the killer, the the monster, as he or she chases um, the victim. Right. So all of these sort of ideas of looking, and this is a nice segue to think about the reading um, that you have for this week. In in that one of the readings is Laura Mulvey's Visual Pleasure, and Laura Mulvey is looking at in that that article. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I want you to read it and come up with your own ideas, but she's really focusing on, on this sort of relationship of looking between the filmmaker, the, the characters on the screen, and the audience. So when you're reading that article, I want you to think about how that relates to horror film, right? So she's talking specifically in that article about classic Hollywood film, particularly melodrama, right? So looking at understanding how the look works in classical Hollywood film. And I think that you can make some very clear connections to how that look then functions in the horror film and what's happening with it and why does it make it even scarier, right? So um, that's something I want you to pay attention when you're doing the reading. We'll talk more about the reading um, in next week's discussion. I don't want to get too, too much about it, but I do want you to pay attention 
attention to that particular reading by Lauren Mulvey is sort of one of the quintessential groundwork pieces about horror film. Sorry, about feminist film theory. It's it's sort of you know the piece that lays the foundation. All of feminist film theory based is based on that coming out of of the that period. Um, whether it agrees with it or not. So this is very important work. Um, and so I want you to think about that. Um, and because initially horror film was panned by early feminist scholars because it was considered completely misogynistic, um, not worth the time because it just replicates all of these stereotypes and, and, and all the problems that early cinema already did. And so one of the things that's happening more recently is a lot of recent feminist scholars are looking back and saying, okay, yeah, that's true, but what else was also happening? Was there another way to look at these films? And so I want you to start thinking about, and one of the things we're going to do is sort of both do a sort of traditional reading of the films we're watching, but I also want you to complicate those readings by thinking of, is there some other way to interpret what's happening? And I will leave you with that as you go do the readings for this week and watch the films and we'll talk more later. Bye.